Everyone, it's Ross, and I got a super exciting video for you guys today. This is like really a revelation here in the Zone 7A Philadelphia area. I had no idea that you could grow sugarcane in such a cold place, but you can, and you can even perennialize it here. I'm gonna talk about how that's possible, but what I have in my hand is actually sugarcane that I grew. And I have um, been kind of chopping it up and getting it ready to be pressed in the juicer. Um, and what you can see over here is actually the leftovers of the leaves and the outer leaves and the, the shells of the leaves. I mean, it's kind of in a, a little bit of a mess to prepare to juice it, but I want to show you guys how this tastes. I want to show you guys how the juice tastes. We can even add some ginger to it. I think what I'm going to do with all this stuff is taste it, and then I'm going to make a nice cocktail uh, and bring that to my friend's Thanksgiving party. We're gonna show you guys outside. I'm gonna take you guys outside in a minute. We're gonna show you guys how I grew it, how easy this whole thing was. And then also, um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about how to perennialize this because this is a permanent food source here in my zone 7A climate. So I'm gonna put you guys down for just a minute and we're gonna briefly go over because this is, this is really a mess here, guys. It really is of preparing this sugar cane for the juicer. Uh, I didn't expect this to be that difficult. In fact, you guys probably are gonna need a pretty heavy duty juicer for this, uh, but there's ways around it. Uh, this juicer down here only cost me like 40, 35 bucks, and I'm able to get something out of this. Uh, so what you wanna do is take your, your canes of sugar cane here, and you're gonna essentially take your, your pruning shears, believe it or not, because I find this is so difficult to get through that your pruning shears work really well. So I'm gonna see these little grooves. These are basically the nodes of the sugar cane. And if you were to plant this sideways, which is what we did, it's gonna form a, a branch here and it could potentially form another branch here, but you can't see that just yet. There's another node there. And you would plant them horizontally. That's exactly what I did. And I could plant this if I wanted to, but I wanna eat this. So what we're gonna do is actually cut this away from the, the nodes here. In these little sections here, it really gets difficult for the juicer, I think, to, to process this. So I'm actually cutting this away. I'm not letting the, uh, the juicer even touch this, as you guys can see. And then actually what happens when you do that is that the leaves come apart or come off easily, I should say, and you're left with the inside. That's a bit of a weird inside looking thing here. And the fact, what, even, what's, what stinks even more is that we have to then peel this even further. This is not really gonna be that successful in the, in the juicer. So what I'll do is I'll cut this in half and then I'll get something like this and you could peel this down even further and uh, depending on how strong your juicer is, this will work. But I'm actually gonna lay this flat down in the juicer and kind of act as it like, like a presser. And this is gonna press all that juice out of here because all this fiber is just not going through the machine. Um, it's just not strong enough. It's just, it seems to be a bit difficult. But you can see down here, I'm gonna bring this. Now we're gonna do a little bit of a taste test. This is just, I tasted it already and you can see it's brown because it's sort of oxidized. That sugar in here is oxidized. Um, it's really quite good. It's really like eating sugar water. And there's a little bit of, I guess, of that, that sugar cane flavor. It's not just straight sugar. And what else is kind of weird, I'm gonna grab my pruning shears. I guess what else is weird is that I've never really had sugar cane before. So I didn't really know what to expect, but it seems like a dark sugar flavor. Pretty rich, very sweet, and you really don't need a whole lot of it um, if you wanted to sweeten something up, right? You don't really need a crazy amount of that stuff. And here's where I planted it, right behind these artichokes. And that's another little kind of experiment that we've been doing. We chopped down all the fig trees, guys, by the way. This is just our little method of protecting them throughout the winter time. And it's really, really simple because I did the same thing with the sugar cane, which you can see back here. 
This was the base of the sugarcane plant. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the artichokes, everything over here, all the figs, you name it. We chopped it all down to about six to 12 inches off the ground. And I'm gonna cover this with a tarp. And that's just a really good form of protection. Now, what I wanna do with the sugarcane and even the, uh, the artichokes here is that we can just take some straw and really just cover the base of these plants and this will come back every single year and that way i have myself a perennial food source and what i want to do right now because i was told by my buddy brian who sent me this sugar cane this is a louisiana heirloom variety what i want to do is actually chew on it because this is believe it or not what he told me is what it's really great for is chewing on it so just cutting this off the tree here or off the plant is really just juice is pouring out of this thing as to be expected you know i'm gonna try and break this in half there we go let's chew on it now and uh see how this compares i guess to the juice because you know, the juice is really good, but if I could just chew on this, it's probably a lot less work and a lot less headache. Um, clearly, if I was gonna make a cocktail for my friends, this is probably not something that um, I'm gonna give them and just say, here, here's the, you know, thing of sugar cane, chew on it. But I guess you could stick this in the cocktail and that's maybe what I'll do. That's really good, guys. It's really sweet, too, and it's actually kind of fun. It's pretty hard. Um, wow. It's really good. I enjoy it. So I want to thank my buddy Brian for getting me this. It really was as simple as just laying down one of these cuttings. You know, you get yourself... If this was the sugar cane cutting, just get yourself two nodes on it and just lay this down in a trench. That's really all this was. It, one of these nodes came up and it was only one node and it forms one, two, three, four, five different new canes from the base that then all fruited for me in the first year from cutting, which is really quite incredible. And there's actually some other ones that were trying to come up down over here but we just haven't had enough time in the season i guess to get all these to fully mature but you know as this thing gets older and stronger i can't imagine how much sugar cane i'm going to get it's probably quite incredible um so there it is guys there's the, like the little video i wish you guys had seen all the tr the trouble i went through though trying to juice that stuff it's not easy and i think it might actually be easier if I just stick the sugar cane in the, uh, in the cocktail itself. I imagine, I think I'm going to try some tequila, some ginger, um, obviously the sugar cane. And then um, I may even put some lime in there. Um, any ideas? Send me, uh, send it, put that down in the comments, guys. Any ideas for the, the cocktail would be much appreciated. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching this one. Some, grow some sugar cane. In your backyard, it doesn't matter where you live, keep the base of the plant warm throughout the wintertime, insulate it well, and it will come back year after year. Um, take care, guys. We'll see you soon. Subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And check out our blog, figboss.com. Take care, guys. We'll see you for tomorrow's video.